Hello and welcome. Today, the beginning of a mega two part event Hacking Donkey King. Let's go. In part one, we're going to keep things relatively simple. We're going to go over some basic code that I wrote in the 80s that would help me find that location and memory that I could change so that I could have as many lives as I want on Donkey King. In part two, we're going to get a little bit more technical. We're going to talk about how machine language code is saved on disk, how it's uh, separated into blocks, and how each block has a preamble and a postamble. And we're going to talk about how to disassemble the code to try to understand why that hack that I wrote actually works, which I never really understood. I just had a hunch that it might, but I didn't know exactly why it worked. So we'll do that in part two. But for now, let's take a look at Donkey King. Donkey King was a popular Donkey Kong clone on the Coco, and it was probably the game I played the most. I wasn't great at it, though, and I did want to see all the screens that it had. So I wanted to hack it so I could get as many lives as possible. And so let's take a look at what I wrote to do that. So this is it, it's pretty simple. And the idea is that normally you get three lives in Donkey King. So I figured that somewhere throughout the code for Donkey King between these addresses, the number three will show up. Uh, because they need to initialize a variable to be three lives somewhere, probably. And initializing that variable requires this constant three to be stored somewhere or to be in the code. So I figured why not just search the whole thing. Every time I see something, who, an address whose value is three, print it. And then when I'm done, I can go through each of those locations and try poking 255 into that location, or one as a test, and see, does that change how many lives I get? Um, one sticky point is how do I know where Donkey King gets loaded into memory? And the answer is, at this point, I only had cassette tapes. And when you have a cassette tape, all you've got to do is use these peaks. This peak will tell you the load address, where does it start in memory. This will tell you the end address, where is the last byte that got loaded. And this tells you the execution address. When you type exec, where will it by default start executing? So this and this were all I needed to tell me what the range would be for the memory locations to look at. If you're loading from disk, however, you're not so lucky. Um, and so I will actually talk about that in part two, how you would figure out these locations if you're loading from disk. Um, the only other stuff I added, I didn't have this when I originally wrote the code, is I had a counter just to keep track of how many locations I find that actually match, that actually have three. So let's go into XROAR. I have already loaded up the Donkey King code. I've loaded up my hack, this basic program, and I'm gonna run it, so I'm gonna hit Shift F12 to enter turbo mode. You can see by how fast this is blinking, we're going super fast, which is gonna be pretty helpful because there's a lot of work that needs to be done. This is way faster than poke 65495, 0, which is what I did back then. Uh, I didn't have this cool app. So let's run it and it's printing out the hex values of every address that matches, and oh boy, there's a lot of them. Oh boy. Oh, that's a lot of trial and error, because I'm gonna have to go through each one of these, poke it to something, run it, and see if it crashes, or if it works, but it didn't do what I wanted it to do, or if it did what I wanted to do. Got 350. So this is when I got the idea, well, you know, Donkey King has practice game mode as well. Uh, and in practice game mode, you get 12 men instead of three. 
So what if I changed my code to search for 12 instead of 3? Will that be better? So here's that line that searches for 3. I'll just say, no, I mean 12. And let's see if we can do better than 350 locations. Okay, that's a lot too. But it's way less than 350. I mean, this is still more than any reasonable human would ever want to do. But back then, I was very unreasonable, and I said, well, let's see. Maybe I'll be lucky, and it'll be one of the earlier addresses, and I won't have to go through that many. And if I do find the one that works, that means practice game mode is the mode I need to go into to make use of my hack. So I would start poking. In fact, what I did is I like printed all of this out because you know you can't even scroll on a cocoa. And I would do something like this: poke. I'll start at the last one. Seven D six B. Seven D six B. Comma. Let's say uh, one. And then if I only get one man on the practice game, then I know it worked. It's not going to work, but let's see what happens. It'll probably just work and crash in some weird place. Say one player, practice game, yes. Okay, that looks like more than uh, one life. So probably going to be 12, I'm guessing. So that didn't work. But what I did is I just started going from the beginning until I found the address that would work. And I was super lucky because here is the address that will work. I reloaded it. 3268, the magic address. Let's try it out. Practice game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12. Eureka! It keeps on going. So that's it for part one. Uh, stay tuned for part two where I talk about how you can figure out these addresses when you load from disk. And we're going to disassemble Donkey King and we're going to see what actually happens at that magic address 3268. Until next time, see you then.